Welcome to the Geriatric Museum. As we roam around this prehistoric memory palace, you'll learn how to diagnose chronic kidney disease, CKD, and learn about the most common causes. The CDC estimates that 15% of adults in the U.S. have chronic kidney disease, and as many as 90% of them don't even know it. Those are among the top five medical facts that suck because early identification and optimal management can prevent or at least delay end-stage kidney disease. Although patients may present with elevated blood pressure, edema, and changes in urination, either polyuria or oliguria, many patients are asymptomatic and their CKD will be caught incidentally. All right, let's start our tour. This CK dinosaur exhibit is open for three months to remind you that to make a diagnosis of CKD, you need evidence of kidney damage for at least three months. This evidence can include an estimated glomerular filtration rate, or EGFR, less than 60. Does that machine say Goffy on it? Oh, no, that's a 60. I get it. Another type of kidney damage that will qualify you for a diagnosis of CKD is albuminuria. This occurs when protein starts leaking across damaged glomeruli into the urine, represented by this yellow drink. It's usually detected when a spot urine check reveals an elevated albumin to creatinine ratio above 30 milligrams per gram. To help you remember that, we've stacked an album, our symbol for albumin, above a credit card, our symbol for creatinine. Other possible evidence of damage includes abnormal imaging, usually an ultrasound, represented as always with a megaphone. This spotted arm cast will remind you to look for various types of casts on microscopic examination of the urine, including granular, waxy, and fatty casts, as well as white or red blood cell casts. Basically, CKD turns your bladder into the least satisfying piñata of all time.